Now, the big story that is our prime focus today at 1 p.m. concerns both you and me. Now, sample this. You are traveling or sitting on a couch at home and you don't realize that you've spent hours scrolling through reels, posts and stories on Instagram and Facebook. Sometimes even go on to profiles of absolute strangers who do not really concern you. But do we ever question, are we consuming the social media content or is the content consuming us? Well, the US has decided to take a stern position on the addictive features of the Meta platforms. Around 33 US states are suing Meta platforms, especially the Instagram unit, accusing them of contributing to mental health crisis in youth. In a formal complaint filed in the Oakland, California Federal Court on Tuesday, 33 states, including California and Illinois, maintain that Meta, which also operates a Facebook, has repeatedly misled the public about the substantial dangers of its platforms. The complaint further cites how young children and teenagers are compelled into addictive and compulsive social media use without warnings. And to discuss this further, I'm joined by our guest this afternoon. I'm joined by Dr. Deepak Raheja, who is a psychiatrist. And I'm also joined by RJ Hemant, who is a stand-up artist and a comedian as well. Let me go across to Mr. RJ Hemant right now, but I'll have to first thank you all for taking our time and joining us over here at Mirror Now this afternoon. Uh, RJ Hemant, I will have to ask you, Today, social media has become an indispensable tool for any entity to try and market and sell themselves out there. Now, people are going to question, a section of society could probably turn around and question is that social media has almost become a bread and butter and a way of sustenance for many. And the addiction cannot single-handedly be pinpointed on social media alone. It can be other forms of addiction. If somebody is working on computers for too long, listening to music for too long, watching TV for too long, even they contribute to mental health issues. Do you think that it is a bit misplaced when it comes to singling out meta platforms, particularly Instagram? Well, firstly, good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I clearly think you know anything that is overdone is always a problem, be it social media or any habits that we have, eating, drinking, anything for that matter. So I think social media is, is, a, is a great boon for a lot of people right now compared to the argument of it being a pain. So I think what social media, especially what Instagram has done, is, is that it's given wings to a lot of youngsters, a lot of people out there to you know, gain more information, meet new people, uh, create their own uh, stardom for that matter, and also the fact that create their own industry and not dependent on something else. Like, for example, if there's something that I am doing, like, like a show or, or anything that I'm doing uh, new, I don't have to depend on an external third party for promoting my content or whatever that I am doing. I can do it all by myself, thanks to social media. So the word social media itself tells me that it is something that is related to the society out there. And the argument of the other saying, uh, overusing it, is a problem. Well, I think overusing anything is a problem as such. Well, also, the fact that there was a time when people said um, films have a lot of negative influence on society. However, most of the films, at least 90% of what we have across Indian screens, um, are about good over evil. So how come we are not taking the good part of it? So it's a choice, clearly. And point number two is, which I'm trying to specify again and again, that Addiction in any form on anything is always a problem. So I think social media, especially Instagram, is a boon for the society and nothing else. Okay, that is a point taken, Mr. Hemant over there. Thank you for putting it into perspective. But kindly stay with us as me also go across to my uh, other guest, Dr. Deepak Raheja, who's a psychiatrist. Uh, Dr. Raheja, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us over here at Mirror Now. We just heard what RJ Hemant had to say where they felt that it's a boon of sorts for many of those who will otherwise find it difficult to market themselves or put their content and their work on a social media online. They do not need any other tool. But the question that I'm asking you over here is that mental health issues emanating out of particularly social media, uh, do you think that this is rampantly happening is the reason why US has taken this space? Uh, or do you feel that uh, there are other such ways by which also mental health of youth can be impacted by? Dr. Raheja. 
So I, I do uh, agree with uh, Mr. Hemant that in a lot of way it is a boon, but there is definitely a certain sense of responsibility both on the parts of the user and the platform provider. So uh, it would not, it would be unfair to say that mental health issues may not have escalated because of social media. But yes, we do know social media has has done great things for many startups, for people trying to showcase what they are doing. But I think a certain sense of responsibility from the from the content provider um, in terms of the right algorithms, because I think collectively it is very important for us to build up a society that is evolving, that is responsible, that is mature, and that is cognitively stable. And could social media or the current social media strategies and the content available uh, be uh, contributing in a surreptitious or an unknowing way in, in escalating some of the mental health issues or body dysmorphophobia or comparison? I would not say it can totally be discounted or that thought can be eliminated. So we are definitely at a point where the youth might be getting addicted and uh, or or habituated to overuse of social media and to some extent the regulation of the content because see a lawsuit like this does not mean that there's a penalty and and the heavens falling down but i think these are these whistle blowing mechanisms or these mechanisms can be a, a, a parameter for these service providers to be more conscientious because at the end of it, when it's youth, it's your child and my child and the and the child of the one who owns Meta or the CEO or the, the CXO. So I think it is very important for us to have that collective responsibility that we are not harming the youth because there was that uh, telltale thought that was floating that if in a particular country you, you kept swiping the reels, the kind of content you'll find is is more leadership oriented and 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 um, you know uh, growth oriented uh, vis a vis the content that you will see in some countries which is about dancing about body image about and then the youth unfortunately it doesn't have and as a psychiatrist i do see that um, the incidence of sometimes eating disorder or body dysmorphophobia because what you are seeing on internet is is glitter and glamour and and uh, too much reliance of the youth or society just on the way we look or or looking at utopian figures and and utopian uh, people who look like physical uh, beauty divas can be daunting so i think that sense of restraint and responsibility would really really help the youth and the society collectively Okay, you made some pertinent points over there, Dr. Raheja. But uh, like Mr. Raheja was saying, uh, Himant, you know, you just heard him. Do you feel that there is a need for some sense of uh, fretters or some sense of tools that can be put in place to try and remind you that maybe you're scrolling for almost uh, 15, 20, half an hour, one hour, and you're going through content not realizing that it's absolute stranger and the content may not even necessarily need it. Uh, and that may, you know impact your mental health not immediately you don't even realize that you're going to have that impact on you do you feel that there should be certain tools that can be introduced do you feel there is a need for it uh, well two things again uh, point number one when you say the platform having tools to have a check well i think every platform does i mean if you go to the settings and check you that will always tell you the number of the amount of time that you spend on that particular app Etc. Cetera, et cetera. Your phone tells you, your uh, the concerned platform tells you all that. However, my point again is it's not the external platform or external, the third person on which one should depend on in terms of checking or keeping their addiction in check. You can never do that. I mean, for example, right now, say Meta, Instagram slash uh, Facebook comes up with a new filter that says, okay, you've been on the platform for one hour, that's it, you can't access for the next, say, six hours. Just giving an example. So people who, people like me, can start another account and re-access it. So in what way will you keep a check? So I think the check has to be from within. It has to be from their own side. So for the youngsters, maybe it has to be the parents who have to keep a check. Or maybe for, for uh, 
the elders, maybe it has to be their friends or family who have to keep, in it, keep a check. So it has to be either from within or from the people that are around you who will have a control over you and say, you know what, this is something that you were poor doing. Like, for example, every morning, I'm all day, all of us, we eat whatever we eat. Even what we eat also, if we overdo that, that's creating a problem. So my point is, things like Instagram especially have helped so much uh, in this generation, especially like you, you, the stars are not just film stars or sports stars. Now you have an Instagram star, you have a YouTube star, you have a Twitter star. So there are so many levels through which one can create their own stardom. That is what Instagram slash Meta or Twitter has done. So my point is, when these platforms are helping one to create their own brand in this competitive world, why should okay. we point at them? Because we have a problem with ourselves. So that's that's my point. All right, but you know, the content is being uh, consumed by many, many of those teenagers and children, perhaps for whom even this content is not even meant for. Dr. Raheja, just final words before I wrap this conversation. How do you think, uh, can there be any sort of filters? How can this addiction be kept in check? Of course, US has gone ahead and filed a lawsuit, but is this rampant, almost like an epidemic across the generation that we see hooked onto uh, telephone screens or being on the laptops and iPads? What do you think is going to be the way forward, Dr. Raheja? I, I just taking a continuum from what Mr. Heyman said, the filter or that control has to be from within, but also from without, from, from the external environment. And I, I don't think the service provider can totally be absolved from the responsibility of, of contributing to creating that mechanism because it would be unfair for the society to expect a 13-year-old or a 15-year-old to be able to get all the, the mechanisms in place. So I think it is very important, like I've been saying, for us to create a society which is responsible and uh, and like you were saying uh, a six hour of void of not using i'm saying even a 10 minute void breaks that cycle because you know uh, unfortunately people don't realize when you go on a dinner table five yes. people sitting on their phones that's not a responsible society we are creating a because the virtual um, time that we are spending on the screen starts to alter the mechanisms in the brain uh, b also the, there's a difference between the the skills that you learn on online versus the skills in real life. So I think it is very important for us to go out and not just be confined to the virtual space and, and to, to be able to use it responsibility, responsibly along with the, the filters that would be provided by ourselves, by our families or, or the, the near ones if we, if we are young enough okay. and, and also the, some responsibility with the service provider also. Absolutely. It's got to be a collaborative effort if this sort of a addiction has to be done away with, especially for those at a nascent age and uh, tender years who are gradually getting addicted to it. But thank you so much, Dr. Raheja and uh, Vijay Hemant for joining us over here at Mirror Now and sharing your views on this subject. Thank you.